Okay, hello everybody, welcome to this class on Verbally. Um, my name is Amy and we're doing a speaking class today. Our topic is, let's talk about technology and life. So we're going to be discussing technology in today's class um, and having a look at some interesting questions because technology I think has influenced, well it's certainly influenced all of us if you're watching this right now or if you're about to participate in the class. Um, it's given us a whole new way of learning languages and that's just one um, way in which it's impacted certainly my life and your life. Um, so we're going to be talking about technology today, what's, what we like about it, what we don't like so much about it and how it's changed our lives. Um, so it's going to be a, an interesting discussion. We're going to focus today on speaking and it's a sort of intermediate to advanced class. So do come along in if you've booked a slot and I believe there are couple of spaces left if you're interested in coming in to practice your speaking then get in quickly before they get uh, taken up. So we'll start off the class um, as usual. I'll tell you about the two most important pages that you need to, well you don't need to but you might like to take a look at. They are my Facebook page for Verbling so that's my Verbling teacher Facebook page um, where you can get in touch with me and see what's going on. Um, then there's the other important page, which is my Verbling teacher page, which is probably um, a little bit more informative in that you can find out about my classes. Um, you can click on the follow button um, to get automatic notifications, and you can also see my um, private tutoring schedule. In case you're interested, uh, excuse me, some teachers, um, some students want to have private tutoring just because they want to work on something a bit more specific with their language. Um, practice for a test that's coming up, ask particular questions, instead of the more general class format that we usually have on Verbling. So do go ahead and check out those pages um, later on if you have time. Um, and as I said, we're going to be having a speaking class today and our topic is technology and how it has affected our lives. So before we get started, we're going to say hi to our students and see how they're getting on. So. Good morning or good evening to you, Raphael. Uh, good morning and good evening to you too. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. I'm fine. Yeah. Good. It's, Friday, got... so it's a lovely. It's a weekend. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, favorite day of the week. It's got to be right. I love Fridays. Yes. Me um, too. It's like the anticipation of the weekend is almost better than the actual weekend. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. Um, it's actually Saturday for me now because I'm ahead of all of you guys in New Zealand. Um, we're like, I, I, I forgot you're in the future. <laughs> yeah, I am in the future. Um, so yes, well happy Friday anyway to you, Raphael. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome to the class. Um, who else do we have? Jorge, good evening and happy Friday to you. Good morning for you, Amy. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm great, thank you. It's Okay, so the weather's not living up to quite what I hoped today, actually. It's looking a bit rainy, but since I'm teaching, I don't mind because I'm missing out on the weather anyway. So I'm fine. This is common in New Zealand. <laughs> really common. It rains so much. But the good thing about it is that it only rains for like a short time and then it goes sunny again. So it's not too bad. Yeah, this is typical. I remember. Uh, the, it's funny because I never saw, uh, a, how do you say, light things in, uh, when I was there. It's lightning. very fun. Funny. Lightning, yeah. Oh, you, you mean you'd never seen it before until you came here? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because, I don't know, it's but funny because uh, always uh, raining, it was softy. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember uh, uh, a day when raining was uh, so heavy. Yeah, well, um, did you? where did you come to, Jorge? Did you come to Auckland or did you travel around? Yeah, I live in Auckland for more than six months. Is that right? Which part of Auckland? Uh, near to One Tree Hill. Near to One Tree Hill. That's not far from me at all. I am in the east part of Auckland. Oh, really? So one tree... Yeah, in St. Helier's, which is near the beach. I don't know if you have been there. Uh, maybe. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
Um, but One Tree Hill, I went there just a couple of weeks ago in the evening, and for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, um, they used to, it's, it's in the city of Auckland, there are lots of volcanoes, <coughs> because New Zealand's yeah. um, a busy country in that um, kind of field, oh, lots of geothermal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Um, One Tree Hill is basically a volcano that used to have a big tree on it, but the tree got cut down, and now it has like a, um, what would you call it, like a monument, and you can see a beautiful view of the city. Yeah, the story was funny because, uh, I don't know, some, year, some years ago, there was a tree, and mm -hmm. that tree was uh, very symbolic for that people, and it was very terrible when they had to cut the tree. I don't remember yeah. what was the reason. I think it was, I think the tree was dying, like it got some kind of sickness. I'm not entirely sure. Probably can look it up on the internet, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. still a cool place to go, even without the tree. Yeah, it's very nice. That's very cool. And when were you here, Jorge? How long ago? Uh, now? Like, when were you in New Zealand? Last year or...? Ah, okay, no, no, no. I, I was uh, three years ago. Mm. Uh, exactly when was the Rugby Cup. Oh, it you were here for the World in... Cup. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go to any of the games? Only one game. To be honest, it, it was very strange for me because rugby is not a popular uh, a sport in my country, mm -hmm. uh, but I had to learn about uh, about that sport because it was the principal topic when I when the rugby cup was there. <laughs> um, because New Zealand is mad and crazy about rugby. Yeah, actually, they are the best uh, in rugby cup. Yeah, the All Blacks. Uh, they're like the yeah. New Zealand royal family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they are amazing, I have to admit. Even though I still support England when it's rugby. Go England! Sorry. Uh, yeah. Of course. I can't help myself. <laughs> well, it was great that you were in Auckland, Jorge. It's nice that you know where I am. Because not many people know about it. <laughs> yeah, it's an exotic place. It is quite exotic. All right, well, welcome to the class. Um, and I'll just say hi to Charlie. Hey, old teacher. How are you doing, Charlie? I'm fine, thank you. It's been a while since I saw you, but we have met before, hey? Yes, we met yeah. before. Yeah. Do, can you remind me, where are you from? I'm from Turkey. I'm oh, from Turkey, that's right. I really like your picture of your bird. Is that your bird? Yes. What's it, what, does it have a name? Yes, he, his, uh, her name is Cotton. In Cotton? <laughs> That's a cute name. Oh, I love birds. Um, I used to have a budgie. Oh, she was a cool pet, but I don't have any pets now. So <laughs> That's that. Anyway, everybody welcome. It's great to have you. Um, so today we're going to be talking about technology, um, which should be an interesting topic because it's like invading our lives, maybe in a good way, maybe in a bad way. I'm not sure, I think probably both, um, but the very fact that we are here having a class on the internet is pretty cool, um, it's not been going for that long, even like say two years ago I don't think Verbling was doing what it's doing now, um, and it certainly changed a lot of people's lives I think, so I just want to start off by saying, by starting with the topic of, of online um, language learning, before you started learning English with Verbling, what were you doing, and how has online learning changed your experience of learning a language? That's what I would like to know. So, Raphael, do you want to go first? Well, I, when I started learning English, uh, it was it was it was it was a new experience for me because uh, we it's more practical because uh, I don't have enough time to go to a, a, a normal English course because every, everyone nowadays it's so busy, everything is so busy so I, I found it great, uh, I found great uh, to, to have this new experience of, of learning. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. So it's really convenient for you, right? Yes, yes. Do you find it um, as effective as other ways of learning a language? Sorry, could you repeat your question? I want to know if you find it as effective as, say, having a real class with a real teacher. Is is this ver a verbal class as a, just as effective? Do you learn as that? Yes, yes. Uh, it's a uh, it's normal. It's it, it's it's for me. It's just like uh, being in a normal class. It's I don't see great difference in than being in a normal class. Great. That's really good. Have you got a dog, Raphael? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna kill him right now. <laughs> Oh, don't kill him. Don't kill him. <laughs> I love pets. Um, just say hi to him for us, okay? Okay. In, in Portuguese or, or, yeah, you speak Portuguese, right? <laughs> yes. In Portuguese? Okay. <laughs> he probably doesn't understand English, that's why. Um, okay, Jorge, how about you? How has, like, online language learning changed your experience? Oh, if I talk about Berlin, it has been... Uh, oh, uh, I, I can say that it has been the best uh, experience uh, for me. And to be honest, at the first time it was like a new fangled because at the first time I great work. I didn't know how how a uh, hangout uh, that uh, works could work. work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but now it's it's very nice. And if I compare uh, with another uh, English re uh, classes face to face, mm -hmm. I think it's very nice because the experience is so similar. Of course, it's a virtual experience, but uh, I think the process, uh, the learning process, is similar. Yep. Cool. So, does it have any real disadvantages for you, Jorge, or not? Now, to be honest, I think uh, I can find uh, more advantages than the uh, normal classes if I compare the classes in my country, yeah? Because if I compare, of course, with another class, uh, classes that I take in other countries, the only difference is that I can uh, touch the people, yeah? <laughs> I can ha be more close, but it's so similar because I can speak with other people from the other countries and we can change this own experience mm -hmm. and you can see the different backgrounds at the same time that you are learning English. No, it's really nice. Excellent. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, does it make a difference from your point of view? Because obviously, as you just mentioned, with a verbling class, all of, all of the students are generally from different countries, or at least most of us are. Um, with, as compared to maybe in Brazil, most of the people are Brazilian who are in your class, right? Would that be true? No, in my case, I'm from Colombia. <laughs> I'm so um, sorry, Jorge. Yes, Colombia. <laughs> Whoever I'm talking about, that country. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's okay, but but uh, I think at the same time is very important because um, it's I think it's it's not only understand the native English speaker. It's it, at the same time it's important to uh, try to understand another kind of a. Uh, mm, accents from other countries mm -hmm. because not everybody is a, a English native speaker and if I have to speak with a Japanese or a Brazilian or another uh, person uh, I have to take the ability to understand another accent uh, when we are yeah. talking in English. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so that kind of is an advantage in a way, gives you a bit more exposure. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, and I apologize for getting your country wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, what I do want to say, though, from a teacher's point of view, um, it's it's really great having students from all over the world, and I love um, the atmosphere of the classes and the freedom that it gives you. One of the things that is difficult for, from the teacher's point of view is not being able to see your students, because the worst thing is trying to remember who you're talking to when you haven't really seen them. 
you have to rely on the the person's voice and their picture, then they might change their picture. Um, so I, that's my excuse, Jorge, for forgetting your country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I will remember that you're from Colombia. I promise. Um, oh, now I can see you. Gracias. You can see me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, look, you can all turn on your video cameras. That's great. Even so, even when you turn on your video camera, it, it's still small, and I have nine students in the middle of a row, so it's not that easy. Um, but I still think the benefits far outweigh the disadvantages. But thank you, boys. That was very kind of you. <laughs> okay. You do, you can leave them off if you prefer. Um, Charlie, what do you think? How has, has online teaching or online learning changed your experience? Uh, I agree with my friends. Uh, it's very helpful for uh, accents because we are learning from, uh, we are learning English from our teachers which they are not native speakers, mm -hmm. they are also uh, learn uh, from uh, their own <laughs> uh, another uh, not native speakers. Non-native so, speaker, yeah. Is, so it's very helpful for understanding different accents. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very helpful for me. All right, excellent. So I'm really glad to hear that. That's a good start to the class. Um, okay, so I've got four kind of key questions to ask today, and I want us to think about them carefully. So technology is not just used, obviously, for online language learning. Uh, it kind of, like, infiltrates my life, at least. I can't... If I think of all of the technology that I use throughout the day, it's almost impossible to have a day without some kind of technology, unless I force myself to go camping or something. Um, so what the first question I want to ask is about communication. So we've already talked about language learning um, online. Um, but what about other kinds of communication? So how do you use it to communicate with various people in your lives? Your family, your close friends, your acquaintances, your colleagues? Um, what is What do you use um, technology for? If you think back to like not that long ago, say, I don't know, 10 years, um, when email first started to come out, I mean, I would still write letters to people, and now I never write letters to people. Um, but that's only one really small communication method. So we're talking about telephones and smartphones and tablets and email and Facebook and Twitter, and I want to know, what do you guys use to communicate um, what do you find is the best way, what are the advantages of it? Because I think we all have preferences in this area. So, Raphael, you go first. How do you use technology for communication? Uh, nowadays, I currently use uh, more uh, the Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. They okay. are, because it's quite, it's easy and it's practical. Uh, yep. When we don't want to talk with them, but with some person, but we we need to to send an important message, uh, so it, it's okay. We, you just write a few letters, a few lines, and and you give the advice for someone and, and uh, some important information. So it's 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 good. It's practical. Okay, so it's practical. I want to know, Raphael. Um, do you use particular particular websites like Facebook or WhatsApp or particular other method, methods of communication for particular people, particular circumstances? Do you think, okay, I need to get in touch with this person and then you have a typical route of doing that or does it change up all the time? No, no, I use the same same tools for everyone. So mm -hmm. it's I don't have a specific... Uh, Tool for used with some kind of some kinds of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I normally use the cell phone only to only to talk with my to my mom and some some members of family. But uh, the other people, I normally use the these these things these these tools I, I already mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how popular are they in Brazil? Does everyone use Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp? Yes, they use it a lot more than using the. 
cell phone. Yeah. I think I think in one of the last things we know, we look in in a phone if it it can call mess it can make calls because <laughs> we use the telephone as a smartphone for everything. The last thing we use it for make phone calls. Absolutely. So if you have you have a smartphone, right? You must have. Yes. Yeah. So what do you use it? Can you give me like the the top five things that you use it for? Top five. Well. Yeah. Let me see. WhatsApp, the Facebook yeah. Messenger, uh, some my GPS. Okay. And yeah. uh, let me see the Gmail app. Yeah. And and some games. Some games I like to play when I don't have nothing to do. Absolutely. Okay, so it's it's entertainment, it's communication, it helps you find out where you are. Those are the like and it and helps you with your email, which I guess is communication. Um okay, let's see what Jorge says. Jorge, do you have a smartphone? Yes. Yes, and I think the my situation is so similar than Rafael said. Um, because uh, especially a uh, technology that ca uh, those kind of uh, technology it has been easier uh, using the smartphone because you are with your smartphone uh, in everywhere and you have those applications with you all the time even when you are sleeping sometimes it can be bothered <laughs> uh, yeah I think yeah I I think technology have two uh, face, have the two face of the coin. The good okay. things yeah. that you can uh, have a very nice communication. You can do a, a simple and quickly communication, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it uh, extend to time to work in time, and sometimes it could uh, take you a kind of slave. Of the technology. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Yeah, that is to so be, true. Yeah. Make you a slave. It can make you a slave. Um. Okay. So okay. tell me. Thank tell you. me the truth, Jorge. Tell me the truth. Okay. If you had to tell me how many times a day you pick up your smartphone, how many do you think it would be? Oh wow. <laughs> Any I idea? I, I I I think I I can I, I can spend maybe three hours, not not a uh, three hours. No, uh, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But I think it could be this time uh, because I I use the smartphone for my work. Uh, mm -hmm. to talk uh, with my family, to send messages, to uh, yeah, see emails, I even when I am driving, uh, sometimes when I have to go another place, that uh, a place that I don't know, I use WISE and I am mm -hmm. uh, pre uh, pay attention where the WISE tell me when I have to take, yeah. Which way to go, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> true. So if so, it's funny how we always say like, okay, a smartphone helps us to save time, right? But sometimes I have the feeling that it actually wastes more time than it saves because I don't know about you, but I get into the habit of checking all my stuff too much, right? I get to the point where I don't just <laughs> check it when I've got a message, but I'm just like, oh, okay, five minutes, or I sit down, or it's like, oh, more, it's coffee time. <laughs> And like, oh, Facebook, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, <laughs> email, what's coming up on my Verbling calendar, and oh, I feel like I want to explode. I'm just, it's difficult to kind of make it work for you and not become a slave to it, I think. Yeah, sometimes it can, uh, uh, sometimes you can uh, stop uh, or you're focusing something because uh, sometimes a smartphone can, uh, uh, help you to less your focus about something, mm. your concentration. Yeah, it can interrupt your concentration. 
Definitely. Okay, interrupt um, your concentration. Mm -hmm. Do you make use ever of the function which is like, um, I don't know what, I've got an iPhone and it's called do not disturb, so I guess it's on most phones is something similar. Um, do you ever use that kind of function where it, it basically shuts off all the noises so it doesn't interrupt you? Uh, I, I think it's difficult because if there are something important that I need to uh, receive in that moment and I put uh, something like this, does not disturb. Mm. <laughs> uh, you miss it. No, I, I don't know. It, it, it's very difficult nowadays. <laughs> It is, because if what happens to me, right, I put do not disturb on, but then I'm still the same as you. I'm like, oh, what if something actually needs, I need to hear something. So I just end up keep looking at it anyway. It's the most pointless thing ever. <laughs> I spend more time picking up my phone to see if there's a message because I haven't heard it. It's just ridiculous. Um, it's, funny yeah, you right mentioned that because, it's funny you mentioned that because there are people here that, I don't know. They, I think they put the function "please disturb" because they put uh, some crazy music, some crazy MP3 songs, in when they when the phone is ringing. So just to call attention, you know, and it really it really annoying. It really bugged me. But <laughs> yes, okay, those annoying people who have a three-minute song that plays every time they get exactly. one text. It's like da 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 text text text. And the whole of the room can hear. That is seriously annoying. <laughs> Agreed, Raphael. Yeah. Um, all right, let's ask Charlie. Um, Charlie, do you have a smartphone? Yes. Okay, tell us your experience. Can you relate to what these guys have been saying? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I waste lots of time with my smartphone uh, also I made a mistake and uh, give my private number uh, to my work uh, uh, I use my private number in work mm -hmm. so uh, my smartphone never stops between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yep. It's really boring sometimes. Absolutely. So I would, that's an interesting point because if you, I have the same problem as you. I have one phone which is work, personal, is everything. Um, and sometimes I have the problem where I don't want to look at work for just one day. And I can't distinguish between them because it's the same messages. It comes through the same system. So it's like I always have, something comes there, I can't help but see it, and then I'm thinking about it, because you can't help yourself. So do you find that is a problem for you, like not being able to cut work off at any point? Yes. Uh, in the first, I thought that carrying two different phones uh, more uh, diffi uh, more difficult to me, mm -hmm. but I have to do that. Because yeah. uh, com combines all the work and private phones, and I have uh, never feel <laughs> uh, free Relaxed. time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was just reading what Jorge and Rafael have put in the chat box, and um, they mentioned Jorge says he decided to close his Facebook account because he was wasting too much time on it. Do you know what? I know a lot of people who have done this, and then they've decided actually I still need my Facebook and they've opened it again <laughs> which is exactly what Raphael has just said um, because they find that they're missing out on like a chunk of life because people are communicating on Facebook and then they aren't follow they're not keeping up with what's going on so they meet up with their friends and they don't know what anyone's talking about because it's stupid stuff from Facebook or they don't get invited to things because they're not on like the Facebook list. People just like add the people on, send the invitation, and then forget to ring the person who doesn't have a Facebook account. So they end up missing out on events. Um, do you have Facebook, Charlie? No, I am not. And how do you uh, find it? Do you miss out on anything, or is it just that your friends don't have Facebook either? 
Uh, in my opinion, uh, I can contact with my close friends mm -hmm. and also my other friends if I want. Uh, the other people, uh, it's not necessary, I, t okay. I think. Mm -hmm. I don't want to chat or poke them. Uh, if I want to reach one of my friends, I can reach. If I'm not, he or she is not my friend. You know, that just sounds so much simpler. If I'm not able to reach him, then if I'm not no, reach my... him or her mm -hmm. when I want, so they are not my friend. Fair enough. Um, that's a nice strategy. So you don't judge your real friends by your Facebook friends. Yeah. That's probably a great way to live, Caesar. Um, um, sorry, Charlie, because I want to just say hi to Caesar. Hello. No, are you there, Caesar? Well, wait, wait, wait. Are you listening? Yes. All right. See you. Hello. Oh, hello, hi. Hello, hello, everyone. It's good to have you, Caesar. We've been talking about um, so far. We've been just discussing the question: Is technology helping us to communicate or hindering us in communication? And we've spoken about smartphones and how they can be really useful and really annoying. Um, do you have Facebook, Caesar? Yes, I got it. And how? What do you use it for? How do you find it useful? Well, I I, I really don't use uh, so much uh, the Facebook because I I, I don't have time, so much time. Uh, I'm really I use uh, the Facebook only one when I need to uh, found someone friend, mm -hmm. and no more, no more really. So you don't let it control your life. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Good. Do no, you I have a yeah, that's probably the best way to go about it, I should think. And um, do you have a smartphone, Caesar? Well, sorry, I, I don't, I don't hear you. Please. Do you have do, a smartphone? It's basically a phone with applications on that you can. Oh, do right, yes. Okay, apps. Yeah. No, I don't have. What do you have a mobile phone? What, please? Do you have a mobile phone at all? Oh yes, yes, of course. But you, but you just use it for calling. What do you use it for? We only send messages. Mhm. Mm with my, 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 the partners of my job, or my friends only. Yeah. Oh, your life sounds so simple. I don't. I, 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 don't, really I don't use. I don't use these these uh, applications or uh, uh, smartphones for com uh, for uh, compare the photographs or any one mm -hmm. message. No. I don't really use it. The sharing photographs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So how do you generally keep in touch with your friends? Do you normally call them? Do you email? Do you text? Um, sometimes I uh, use uh, the mail, the corporative mail of my company. Yes. Uh, in, other, in other moments, I only use a cell phone. All right. So, I prefer I prefer this type of communications uh, because uh, I like to use uh, a communication more personally uh, between two people and and I, I try to understand your 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 needed and your uh, see okay I don't know no it's great what you're saying is really true I think you sound like you've got it sussed Caesar all right okay <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> That's great. It's great. Um, let's okay. say hi to Sergio, who just arrived. Hi, Am. Hello. How are you? Have I met you before, Sergio? Uh, unfortunately, I think not. No, I don't remember. Well, it's nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Sure. Uh, um, hi, guys. Hi, Alfa. Sergio, we're talking about this lesson is all about technology and how it kind of affects our lives. So we've so far discussed how verbling is helping us or how online language teaching has changed our experience of learning a language. And then we were talking about what kind of communication 
what kind of technology, sorry, we use for communication and whether it's um, sort of helping us mostly or whether it's interrupting our lives. Um, so tell us your opinion. Do you find technology useful for communication? And if so, what do you prefer to use? Uh, yes, uh, I totally agree that uh, the technology help us to communicate more and more actively as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, sometimes depends uh, how much you use it. Sometimes yeah. maybe uh, it's maybe the sometimes with time, just your time, <laughs> our time, and sometimes yes, it's totally productive for us. Definitely. So it sort of depends on you as a person how well you're able to regulate your technology usage, would you say? Yes. Yes. All right. Excellent. So we're going to move on to another question. Um, and the chat box is kind of I'm not working that well today. So yeah, I'm kind of annoying. I'm going to use the Google chat box for a second, guys, just because I like to type. Um, just comments and corrections in there, so I'm switching over, okay, to Google because the Verbling chat box is playing up. Um, so the next question I want to ask all of you is, what technology would you like to get rid of if you could? Okay, it doesn't Riddle? have to be just. What does to get rid of mean? I understand you. Anybody ex can explain that? Maybe you can, if you can. Uh, give up of this special technology? Yes, exactly. Make it disappear. Yeah. Bye bye, bye bye, goodbye. Don't want you ever again. Um, so it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be just about communication. It could be any technology. Okay, um, anything that's ex that exists in this world that you think is a pain and you would like to get rid of it. So let's ask Raphael. Is there anything that you would like to get rid of, Raphael, that really annoys you? Well, apart from your Facebook account. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I was thinking. Uh, I think every technology with uh, that people create to make wars to destroy people's lives. I think. It, we must get rid of it. Get rid of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, technology to create weapons and you know, weapons destruction, mass weapons. I think. Weapons of mass destruction. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's, sorry, that's supposed to be destruction, not destructions. Um, okay. So you think we could we should get rid of weapons of mass destruction? Um, why? Because it's a kind of technology that won't bring benefits to mankind. Only destruction and loss of lives and everything yeah. else related. So it's Absolutely. a kind of technology I don't. I really should uh, should see. I, I really want to see get to get rid of, of it. I would like to see that too, Raphael. Um, what about something a bit more controversial? Such as, for example, nuclear technology used for creating energy. So obviously this is like a big issue in lots of countries. And I bring it up because New Zealand is where I am right now. And it sort of prides itself on being nuclear free. So it doesn't, we're not having any nuclear technology here. Um, having said that, we don't really need it. So it's quite easy to make that decision. But um, there are countries like Japan, the most obvious example, had that big tsunami and the nuclear plant busted and it caused a great number of problems. Um, what do you think about that kind of technology? Uh, unfortunately, man doesn't have, uh, I think man doesn't have the knowledge to deal with this force, to deal with this kind of technology I think he need, it requires more time to study and to development of I know the techniques of production energy mm -hmm. I think it's a great uh, it's a 
it's a great way to produce energy. It's uh, yeah. it's important to produce energy. Uh, but unfortunately, the man doesn't, doesn't know yet. Doesn't now. Uh, the man don't know yet how to handle with this technology. Mm -hmm. Doesn't know how to handle the technology yet. Yeah. Maybe in um, I don't know, thirty or forty years, maybe. Yeah, and I suppose it's just tempting because if we know how to do it, then it's there. We don't really know how to deal with the problems that it causes properly. You're right. So that's the big problem. Um, Jorge, what do you think about nuclear technology? Do you agree with it? And is there anything else that you would like to get rid of? I think technology is not bad. The problem is the use that we give uh, about technology. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if we use a nuclear uh, energy for uh, something good, but that's okay. The problem is when someone wants to use this technology for bad things. Maybe I I, I am agree with uh, Rafael when when uh, he uh, when he say about weapons. I think this is the only one technology that we don't need. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I think it's part of the our nature to fight for things and it, uh, if I see in, in the nature it happens all the time in animals of course no <laughs> similar like like our life but all the time they are uh, fighting for the life yeah their absolutely. life mm -hmm. um, I think you've brought up a really important point um, Jorge that we have invented a lot of technology but it seems that what's missing is our ability to employ it correctly, to use it in a beneficial way, because humans are humans. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, it's like our technology has sort of exceeded our ability to actually fairly use it, and we're causing ourselves problems because of that. Um, let's see what Charlie has to say about it. Charlie, do you agree with with these two, and is there anything that you would like to get rid of, technology-wise? Uh, all of technologies have some benef benefits and mm -hmm. also negative effects. Yeah. So I agree with them. Uh, uh, people need to know how to use it. Absolutely. Um, and is there anything else that you think we don't need apart from weaponry that we that is could cause the planet to blow up, i.e. weapons of mass destruction? Is there anything else that you don't like? Uh, no, nothing. Can't, nothing came to my mind right now. Not not coming into your mind mm -hmm. right now. Okay. No problem. Let's ask Caesar. Caesar, what do you think about it? Are you um, pro nuclear or anti nuclear? Ah, I got it. I don't understand you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nuclear. Okay, no. Uh, the nuclear energy get use uh, help help the people because produce uh, the energy and resources. Uh, for uh, the communities and the countries, uh, the development self, yes, mm -hmm. and yeah. because but uh, another people, another kind of people use the uh, nuclear energy, but other others, uh, how did you say, other things, see uh, weapons and uh, blows, explosions, etc. Um, yeah. Well, but I think that uh, the nuclear technology uh, was uh, no will be the future energy because uh, uh, try to uh, exp exp explain to uh, around the world and produce energy of uh, of kind all kind of energy to the peoples and more uh, but more needed. Yes, I believe so in overall, nuclear energy. 
yeah, you think it's generally quite positive, right? Yes, yes, I think that. Yeah. It, good, good use of, of course, good, with good use. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, what about the instance, for example, what happened in Japan? Um, the Japanese people were not using it in the wrong way, but when the tsunami came, that was mm -hmm. something that was outside their control, and then it caused them a lot of problems. So, how do you overcome that, Caesar? Well, you are just talking about uh, according to the Japanese experience. Yes. Yes, but. Japanese experience is not so good. Uh, remember the they were, remember the Second World, but the, I, the Japanese people is very intelligent because uh, I, they are understanding the benefit uh, of using this time of, or this kind of energy, this kind of product energy, and mm -hmm. uh, are, you are you are seeing uh, the the the, the, the Industrial development that the people Japanese have um, mm -hmm. is very good, and uh, I think I think that uh, the Japanese people don't think don't think about don't think more about it, uh, about it, uh, it uh, according to the uh, happened to it happened to them and the Second World. Uh, I, these people look to the, to the future and look uh, kinds of ways of uh, appro approach this kind of this type of energy. All right. So yeah, that's a good point actually. Um, I think a good word that you could use there, Caesar, is innovators. The Japanese are innovators, so innovators. they create. Yeah. Do you ah, know what that means? Yes. Innovators. Yes. Yeah. Innovators. Yeah. Innovators. All right. Yeah. Um, it's like they're they're using new stuff and 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 figuring out how it works so that really everyone can benefit. And okay. it wasn't yeah unfortunate what happened. Um, that's our Sergio. What do you think? Are you pro or anti nuclear? Uh, depends on the how can how we use this technology. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. uh, I totally agree with the, the opinions uh, uh, because uh, you know the the thing is uh, how the purpose are you using this of this kind of technology? Mm -hmm. uh, most of them is used for to get more money. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, okay, we are firing against the uh, the bad, the, the you know, the the war. But in the the point is the principal point is the money. Yeah. The, is that the countries get more richer, and I don't know uh, if you have a. Uh, always uh, a good decision for okay for health for increase the, the uh, to eradicate the poverty uh, something like that so, okay I totally agree with uh, all kind of uh, technology nuclear uh, whatever but the thing is how how do how what is exactly the purpose we are using technology. Yeah, so you're talking, I think, um, Sergio, about hidden agendas, which is quite a handy phrase in that context. So basically, it's like um, the real right. reason that you're doing something <laughs> is secret, right? Or at least you're trying to cover it up. And this is what I'm doing because of this, but it's not the real reason. You have a hidden agenda, yeah? Which is uh, pretty much your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or it could be a second agenda. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So uh, my last Amy, question. Yeah. Amy, sorry. Oh, what is the main main source of energy in New Zealand? The main source of energy in New Zealand. That is a really good question. Um, I don't know. I don't actually know, Raphael. I'm going to look that one up and post it on Facebook for you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks. We have. 
We do use geothermal energy. I'm not sure if we use that a lot, but New Zealand has a lot of underground activity, and that is one of a really, really good, uh, effective, and cheap way of producing energy. I don't know how much we utilize that right now, but I'm going to look that up on the internet and, and let you know. Um, all right, so my last question is a bit more lighthearted. Um, as stuff changes, technology kind of forces us us to give up the old stuff, right? So what I'm talking about in this case is is old technology that we used to use, and when the new thing came in, it becomes that you can't use that anymore. So you may have like cassette tapes that you now don't have a cassette player for, you can't listen to them anymore, or I don't know, Sony Walkman, or even programs on your computer that maybe you loved, and then an update came, and you had to do the update because you've got to keep up, and then you were like, oh, this is so annoying because the old program, I loved it, and now this new one is stupid. Um, is there anything that you really, really loved that that is gone in the past and you wish you could have it back? Um, like a Game Boy. Do you remember Game Boys? <laughs> Before the wonderful iPod Touch or whatever, I used to have a Game Boy. It was like a huge brick-sized thing with a green screen, but I loved it. It was awesome. Um, does that, that's my thing I would wish to bring back. And you can get an app on your iPhone, which is called Game Boy, and it's like playing a Game Boy. It's so awesome. So let's ask. Um, let's start with Sergio. Is there anything that you wish you could bring back, Sergio? Oh, wow. That's so tough question. I know. You've got to go back into the past. When you were a kid, what did you used to use that you miss? What do you what do you think what do you say about the bring back? Um so is there something that used to be around? It will it used to be the latest technology. Um mm -hmm. but now it's gone and you can't use it anymore because they don't produce it. They don't produce for example the Game Boy, you can't buy the games. I've lost it anyway, and I can't buy a new one. Um, and I wish I still had it for nostalgic purposes. So is mm -hmm. there anything like that that you miss? OK. OK, I get it. Thank you. Yeah? So Sergio is still thinking. I can see him going, let's move on to Raphael, who's also thinking. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he's not ready. Jorge, anything you can think of? Uh, no, I. I I, I think I, I agree with you. Maybe I am nostalgic about uh, some some <laughs> excuse me, some games, some play. Uh, I don't know uh, if you had the opportunity to know to know, know about Family. Family was a console, special a special console mm -hmm. with very uh, uh, fun games. And I don't know. I I, I sometimes I feel uh, uh, I I would like to that games can come back. <laughs> because I wish those it was games very would funny. come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I wish. Yeah. I agree. Um, but you can't because it's like we've moved on. Um. All right. Thank you, Jorge. I've never heard of family. But I guess, like in in our own countries, which weren't as connected back then, we had our own stuff. So maybe it's special, like I don't know, American. Or, um, Charlie, is there anything that you wish would be brought back? No. Uh, I think uh, we were the. Uh, Meet our friend, met our friends much more before because uh, we have not any uh, technologies to contact mm -hmm. uh, simultaneously. Yeah. So I think I miss the uh, meetings with friends. That's a really good point, actually. Um, you miss actually seeing your friends face to face. You don't do that as often now. Yes, that's right. All right, great one. Um, let's see if Caesar has anything. Mm, I am thinking, <laughs> but uh, I, I, rem I remember I remember games uh, when 
I insert coins uh, for to play games, uh, aliens, uh, uh, Pac-Man, um, yeah. where, wherever. And I don't, I don't think so that in this in this time uh, I, I use uh, smartphones and insert coins. But maybe I possibility to simulate it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Maybe there's an application that you can get. Well, I'm sure that you can play Pac-Man yeah. still. It's a coins and push button. <laughs> yeah. We call them arcade games, Caesar. Arcade games? I typed it into the chat box. Okay, games? I don't understand. Sorry. Um, those type of games are called arcade games. The ones that you put the coins ah, in. Arcade games. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo console, please, for, for example. Yeah, exactly. Uh, see, arcade um, games. Excellent. Arcade is... Uh, the game is the ball on the well, ex okay. Okay, games. Be yeah. Good. Beautiful. <laughs> um, Sergio has has answered the question with typewriter. Awesome, Sergio. Did you used to use one? Yes. Uh, 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 I just remind this because uh, because that I know today I can type without without looking. The keyboard, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just like. That's why I miss it. <laughs> yeah, I guess a typewriter is is sort of like the difference between a typewriter and a laptop is probably the same as the difference between like a book and um, a Kindle. It's like very tactile. It's something that you really engage with, like a book. You know, you can hold it, you can smell it. And we kind of lost a lot of that part of life by just having little keys and tapping away or just holding your Kindle there and, you know, <laughs> scrolling through with your thumb. Kind of weird, hey? <laughs> um, have we, have Raphael and Jorge come up with anything? Oh, Jorge's already given us his answer. What about you, Raphael? Uh, I, I thought, thought, and, and I realized that nothing. Uh, nothing? No, no. I think these things have their time, you know, they have their paper, they have their role in maybe our childhood, and we, but the things, the, the times change, you know, we, we evaluate it, the times are, the times on others, uh, it's other time nowadays, so I think we, we must uh, understand the evaluation and know how to deal with these new things, but these things were important in, in in the past, but you know, in the past, so not in the present or future. So there's nothing, nothing I need to add. To this. Fair enough. Just put it all behind you, Raphael. Move on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Great. Um. Okay, we have to finish off, guys. That was a very interesting discussion. Thanks for your contributions. Um. So don't spend the rest of the day on Facebook. Try to do something. I don't know. Call your mom or something. Make yourself feel better that technology is not taking over your life, okay? And I promise I will do the same. Um, have a good <laughs> evening and have a great weekend. I hope okay, to see you. Thank you so much. Likewise. See you. All right. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.